Good evening. Welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring women-owned businesses from across the country. My name is Kimberly McLemore, and I am your host. With us, we have Tamika S. Bright, founder of Pink Conversations Radio Show. Hello. How Welcome, are you? Welcome, Tamika. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm, I'm excited to uh, chat with you today. Well, it's my pleasure, and I've been looking forward to this because it's always great to have somebody else who's kind of in the same business and and learn yeah. about <laughs> how you got started and why. So why don't we start out real quickly with you, just telling the, the listeners a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, I am Tamika Bray. I'm host and creator of Pink Conversations, Empower, Inform, Inspire, and that is what the show is all about. The show is designed for everyone to reach purpose. And I started off as a podcast, but it is um, now a broadcast on a radio station uh, here in Fayetteville, uh, North Carolina. And uh, before I got into radio, I was a cheerleading coach. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yes, well, we're going to yes, talk about uh, that transition in a second. Yes, that sounds interesting. Now, that is a complete, yes. complete uh, difference. But, you know, I'm, sure it, there's, right? <laughs> I'm definitely sure there's a reason behind it. So, yes, now, yes, are you, yes. Are you, are you originally from uh, the North Carolina area? I am not. I was born in New York, but I was raised in the North Carolina area. I was raised in uh, New Bern, okay. North Carolina. So, okay. yeah, on the coast. So, yeah, so I've been here for a minute. In Fayetteville, I've been in Fayetteville for about six years now. Okay. All right. Well, so it's a probably awesome to be able to see that your program has gone from one entity to another level. And I think that is great. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But before we get into um about the actual business tell me how you got started into this because you talked just a minute about the fact that you were a cheerleading coach now how do you go from being a cheerleading coach to doing the business and then what inspired you to decide to do this business so i was a cheerleading coach i coached cheerleading for over 10 years i did high school pop warner i did all-star and lastly college and i coached college for eight years and as of August of this year, I walked away and was like, okay, next phase, next chapter or so in my life. Um, definitely did that with a lot of praying, a lot of seeking God to make sure um, that was the move that he had for me. Um, mm-hmm. And it was. So um, I did that for national championships with cheerleading. I'm excited about that. I thank God for that. Wow. But um, it was just time to, you know, do something different. I'm mm-hmm. the type of person where I don't want, you know, to ever look back and be like, oh, man, I wonder what it would have been like if I did this. Or if I did that, right. you know, I feel like when it's there for you, do it. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, okay, what's next? You know, that's kind of the, <laughs> the um, attitude I have. The, you know, that's just me. Um, and then I'm definitely praying about everything. So that's how the transition went. Went definitely through a lot of praying and fasting to make sure I made the right move because I left a full-time job um, to do radio full-time. So, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that's a huge transition. Like I said, I mean, t- like I said 10 years, you know, it takes a lot to get into mm-hmm. that type of profession and you know, I can be honest and say I have never seen too many women of color, people of color, you know, running um, in cheerleading squads and then doing it at the level that you were doing it. I'm sure that you mm-hmm. were phenomenal. So, what made you decide to get into the radio business? I mean, you know, most people don't even really understand what it takes to even do a podcast. But then now that you're out of the podcast phase and you have a real talk show, a real radio show, what made you Mm -hmm. decide to make that change? 
Well, I always wanted to be in some form of entertainment. I knew that. And when I was in college, I was going to be an entertainment attorney. So I knew I was going to be an entertainment attorney, work with music and media. That was my dream, you know, for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, well, God quickly shut that down. It was like, listen, you know, it's what I have for you in your life. And the reason I know that it was not where God needed me to be, because I applied to every law school in Southern California. And wow. I applied to other law schools. Yeah, and I'm not joking. Every law school in Southern California <laughs> um, and some other law schools. And I didn't get accepted to not one. Okay. I didn't even get a. Well, we might accept you if, well, we can put you on a waiting list. I didn't get any of that. So wow. it was definitely not <laughs> where God had me to be. So I was like, okay, you know, and it's funny because I, I wanted, wanted to be an attorney, but I don't like to do a lot of reading and a lot of writing. <laughs> so that wouldn't have worked out. And as far as the long hours, nah, I love family. So when I want my family time, so it, it was just, yeah, like, how are you going to make that work? So um, just learning those things about myself. So got into coaching and then, um, when I was in college, though, I was in radio. I worked with uh, Radio One for two years, and I started as a promotions team. So okay. I was doing, like, the concerts is on the street team and things like that. And then I started uh, board opping for a gospel station where you're just pushing a bunch of, bunch of buttons. It's like I like to say a person <laughs> with uh, ADD like myself, that's a person's dream because there's buttons everywhere. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so I got to do that. And then I started voice tracking, which is just recording on the gospel station. And then uh, eventually I went on live. So um, I did that for two years, and that was when I got right when I got out of college. And then, of course, left that and uh, ended up coming, moving back home and um, working in the recreation department, doing cheerleading again and uh, coaching track and field and just got into the coaching realm. Went back to school to got my master's degree. Mm-hmm. And um, then I you know, came here to Fayetteville, and I walked into the radio station and was like, hey, I used to do radio, and I want to get back into it. And it took two years before they called me back to say, okay, we have a position open. And I started um, working part-time with Cumulus, and I still do that. Okay. I, um, I'm on, I have another show on Saturdays, 10 to 3, with the Cumulus radio station here. And um, then I was like, okay, well, you know, I think I'm going to do my own thing. I want to see how this thing, you know, how it works out. Right. And mm-hmm. came up with the name. And when people hear Pink Conversations, they automatically think, oh, it's a show for girls. But mm-hmm. I tell them it's a show for everybody. I just like the color pink and I like to conversate. So right. mm-hmm. <laughs> that's how we got that name. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's interesting. I loved how the, the background of how you actually worked your way to this, but then, mm-hmm. you know, it's funny, like you said, you know, you try to do your own thing, but then realize that, no, that's not the direction you're supposed to go. And I think we kind right. of all have those revelations about what it is we're trying to do and trying to find ourselves. But when you have a certain God gifted talent and we all have them, it's just understanding what it is that you're trying to convey and what you want people to hear from you. So tell me a little bit about what pink conversations is about and uh, what do you refer to? Cause I think, you know, it's funny when I seen the name, you know, I think the first thing that kind of brought to my mind was, well, I wonder if they talk a lot about cancer or this, that, because sometimes when you hear the word pink, pink is always utilized in, in, yeah. in I won't say in a negative way, but you know, it's always mm-hmm. attracts people in a, an awareness phase. So right. tell me a yes. little bit. Yeah. So, so that's like, funny you know, that, you said that, that it attracts people in an awareness phase because that's mm-hmm. basically, that is what my show is about. It's just like making people aware and mm-hmm. I never even put that coalition together. So thank you for that. Well, you're I welcome. never <laughs> even put that together. I'm like, well, dang, it does look at God. But, uh, I just, it, it's about topics that empower, inform, and inspire. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. And I don't do any celebrity gossip, and I don't do any political talk. Uh, so, you know, I try to keep social topics that are um, important to my generation and generations that, that are younger, um, mm-hmm. but not talking a, a lot of politics. Um, I do, you know, touch some of the issues. I did touch some of the flag issues that we were having earlier um, in the summer with the NFL League. I talked about that just a little bit. I don't make mm-hmm. my whole show that. Right. Um, this month um, – for the month of February, I'm actually talking about um, love. That's the love month. So, you know, I'm going to talk about happy and healthy relationships. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so and I do um, in, in November, I had a segment of just happy and healthy marriages. Um, I covered, of course, uh, in October, I did have a show um, on breast cancer, but I also did a show on uh, domestic violence and suicide awareness. So those are the type of things that I, that I cover and I um, feature community spotlight guest on my show. So if there's anything going on in the community or surrounding areas, I like to bring people in to talk about what they have going on and getting people to go out in the community and support these events. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, and that's awesome. I, I love the the categories that you talk about. And, and you're right. I think there's enough um, news and negativity that we hear every day, you know, when it surrounds <laughs> with, I mean, unfortunately, we, we have to look at our politics, you know, as being a, a negative thing every day, you know, on, on top right. of some of the other issues that we have going on around the world and in our, within our own country and of course in our own backyards. So I think it's always important to be able to have programs that, you know, provide like you said information keeps people aware but also their topics of what the community really wants to talk about because they don't always get that opportunity to be spotlighted and you know it's a blessing that you were there in North Carolina to provide that that service for them um, with your program so if any you know I guess tell the people a little bit and all the listeners about what the process is. You know, I've talked a little bit about it through other podcast programs and and so forth, but I don't think people really understand truly what it takes to be, uh, whether you're doing a podcast show or whether you have your own radio talk show. So can you just kind of give some insight to that? Yeah. So I do want to go back and say that my show, um, it has different segments in it. So I do my Royal Empowerment. That's how I start off my show. And that's a scripture that I would give uh, for that day. Um, and then I give a bright moment after that scripture and basically just explaining what that scripture is uh, saying. And um, I do all of that through prayer. Like, you know, I'm praying throughout the week of what scripture to give because I really feel that my show is God led. And so I'm, I'm, I don't just go on saying anything and doing anything, even mm-hmm. down to my topics. Um, and then I have a um, doing way too much segment is where I just, it's a crazy story out there. That's true. Believe it or not, it's crazy, but it is true. <laughs> um, <laughs> doing um, uh, my random facts segment was just giving some random facts where you're just like, who would know something like that? So mm-hmm. I give you, you know, just interesting facts. Um, I have my um, fit tips that resurrect fitness. Um, uh, Kelvin Delmar comes on um, for resurrect fitness and he gives us fit tips for the week, helping us like eating right and exercising. Okay. And uh, then I have my guy, Coach Jay. He does our motivational minute from his motivational playbook. So I do different segments, you know, okay. within the show to kind of keep it going. But the process is just that preparing for the show. I also have a college spotlight. So I highlight a college each week within the United States, community mm-hmm. college, junior college or or um, uh, university. So it's just preparing like, you know, my show. Um, right now, it's once a week, but there's a lot of preparation that has to go into that. I'm getting better at not having, like, four or five pages of scripts now in the studio with me, like, <laughs> writing out everything I say. But when right. I first started seeing, I would write out everything that I say, but I wouldn't follow the script. Mm-hmm. I'd end up going <laughs> left when I'm supposed to stay right here. So <laughs> I've gotten better at just doing, like, bullet points to make sure. But that's what it is. It's preparing. You know, it's doing your research on some of these topics because when you're interviewing a guest, you want to make sure you've done your research on that guest and you know what questions that you're asking and you want to make sure you've done your research on the topics that you're actually putting out there. So I'm, I'm doing that as well. And then there's a business side to it. So I'm doing that too. It's not just, oh, you just want a radio and that's it. No, there's a business side to that. And then I'm working that as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think people really understand what goes on in the background. They think when they, you know, hear us on the air, it's like, oh, you know, this is really easy. And I, I, I mm-hmm. tell people no, it's exactly. Not. And you're right. Because <laughs> even though it may only be once a week, like you said, it's it's that prepare, preparation, understanding what mm-hmm. it is your topics are going to be about, you know, or why you want to even reach out to that person, even have that conversation, or if they want to come right. and talk to you. I mean, there's so many pieces that come with that, even as something as simple as the equipment, you know, people don't realize the process you have to go through, even with your equipment to make sure that you can be heard properly. And cause I, I, I know that if you can't hear somebody, I think I've gone through several microphones. So I finally found the one that I really liked. And that was really good that if they can't hear you properly, they're not going to listen to you, you know, <laughs> so, exactly. Or if you have dead air, you know, I've done that. I've been on the radio station and nothing is playing mm-hmm. because I'm thinking it's, yeah. So like you said, it's learning, you know, how to work that board. And I do everything on my show. Like I work my board, I do the recording, I answer the phone and oh, then wow. the show is also Facebook live. So I'm doing well and I'm on air. So, you know, I'm not just sitting in the studio, sitting back on callers on air or the callers. I'm, pushing those buttons on the board to make sure you can hear it. So you're right. And I think, um, I mean, it may look easy and it may sound easy, but that's part of working your gift. I, I do that, like you said, God has given everyone a gift. We all have that, but we've got to work it. And, you know, we work that gift and we become better at it. Just because we're given it doesn't mean we just have to let it lie dormant or not work at it. Right. So and I, that's what kind of makes it maybe sound easy or, or look easy for us because we're actually working at that. Right. That's right. Yeah. And then, like I said, I think it's amazing. I have, I've been in a couple of studios before, but I've never really actually done any type of live, you know, radio talk shows and so forth, but it's definitely something interesting. You know, the one thing that I always tell people, the thing I love about 
uh, doing these shows that, you know, we have an opportunity to be behind the mic, you know, and really giving, you know, other women or men, whoever, these opportunities to share their stories and to learn. We learn so much from other people and, you know, that gives them a platform that they would normally not have. And those are things right. that I always find very, you know, in fulfillment for me. And I'm sure it's the same way for you, because like you said, that this is something that you're using your platform and realizing that this is a, a gift that God has given you and you're, and you're going with that gift because it's something you've ignored to some degree, but then, you know, you finally found it and here it is. And now that. you're, yeah. you're actually doing, and I think it's awesome, but tell yes, me, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, talk to me a little bit about the challenges. There's always challenges in, any t- no matter what type of business you have. So tell me a little bit about what you've gone through and getting stepping into this process because like I said, you hear you went from being, you know, in the cheerleading world for more than 10 years. So I'm sure there's a whole lot of things that you've had to reconfigure and think about, you know, as a new business owner doing what you're doing. Yeah, so definitely, you know, like I said, I walked away in August and that was a full-time paid position with benefits to this, which is not full-time paid. Um, you know, on the same scale as what I was already making. So that was a challenge in itself. You're losing mm-hmm. that income. Mm-hmm. I have a two year old, I have a husband. So there's another challenge, you know, losing that income and you have a family and then the time because now you're running your own business. And so you've got to put in time to that because in order for it to work and for it to be right, you have to put time into it. Um, so, you know, now you have to learn how to balance more. You know, I already had to balance with my son and my husband and work. And now I have to balance even more because this is my own thing. And, right. you know, so. That was a challenge. And getting my husband, he's very supportive of what I do. But, you know, when you walk away from a full-time job, you're like, uh, wait a minute, what's going on? <laughs> you know, type right. thing. So getting him to, you know, just to understand what my dream is and, and the focus and what I felt like God was leading me to do. I mean, just taking that, you know, calling it a leap of faith, a bound of faith, a jump. I mean, I bungee jump. That's what I tell people. I, didn't, right. I just jump out there. And so, yes, and that's what did. it is. Making that, yeah, I bungee though, right? <laughs> so, but you know, my net, my harness, whatever you want to call it, that's God, mm-hmm. you know. And I feel like when God tells you to move, that's exactly what you have to do. Because if you don't, then um, you're gonna you're going to have to reap the you know concussions off of that. But I think you know, and that's exactly what I was doing. I just was going by what uh, God told me to do, and just because you know you feel like God is telling you to to move or shift the unit in that. So in a certain direction doesn't mean it's always going to be an easy and smooth transition because that's where the trusting part comes in. Absolutely. So because if it's smooth and easy, then everybody would do it. That's right. So, and you know, so it has to be a trusting like, okay, I'm telling you to shift this way, shift that way. I got you. You just have to trust me that I got you. And so that's, you know, that is what, um, that that's what I'm doing. Well, and you're doing a phenomenal job and you definitely should be patting yourself on the back every day. And, you know, <laughs> I got, well, you know, I, I just think it's important that, you know, we all have to understand that we have to follow our dreams and yes. it's, and we have to trust in the journey that we decide to choose or that's set there for us. Cause we already know that the platform is there for us. The path is already there for us. We have a tendency of taking ourselves off those paths, but once, right. you, but once you do understand it and you find it, you know, I applaud anybody who's decided that they want to live their dreams and it's okay if nobody else understands it, as long as you understand it and, know, right. and you know, and know why you're doing it. And obviously you were doing a phenomenal job. You're, you're, you're out here doing your thing. And like I said, I applaud you for that. And I think it's wonderful, but let me ask you this question. If you had one woman who would come up and ask you, um, about business, what would you share with her? Um, one woman that comes to me and asks me about this is to pray about it. Again, it's big. You know, the word says that your steps are ordered. You know, the steps of the righteous man is ordered. And so I that took growth because, again, I was telling you when I was in um, coming out of college, I was so stuck on going to law school. Like, that's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I just had to really learn to allow God to order my steps. So instead of going on what they may say willy-nilly about things, just pray and ask for direction. You know, always have a plan. The word always talks to you about having a plan, writing it down and making it plain. So the first thing I would definitely say is write that plan down. The thing is, the dreams that we are given or that we have, they're given to us. It's not something we just wake up one day and was like, oh, we just made this up. No, they're given to us. Those dreams and visions that are that I are given to us by God. And so if he gives those to you, he's going to allow you with the provisions that you need to see those come to pass. But you got to be, you know, you have to be smart about it and you've got to seek him in the direction that you go. And I mean, that, and that's honestly what I would say is just write down whatever your vision may be 
and just seek God for the answers, for the wisdom, what you need to go on this journey. Because you're going to have people that support you and you're going to have people who don't. And there is enough room at the top for everybody. I always say the sky is not the limit. There's more. So it is no point, especially as women, we've got to learn to come together and support and help each other and be supportive of each other. And so I thank you so much just for the kind words that you said and right back to you with the phenomenal job that you are doing and you're giving a platform for women to do this. And so, you know, kudos to you for doing that and not feeling that, oh, well, we don't, you know, we're in the same profession because you could have easily been like, no, she's doing the same thing I do. Let's move on. No, you're giving the same. And that's good. You know, we as women, we are so quick to, especially as African-Americans, we can be so quick to um, shoot each other down and not be supportive. And we've got to stop that. And the only way we're going to make it to the top is if we support each other and we, you know, we be there for each other because there's enough room for everybody out there. So that's one thing I would definitely tell that, you know, person is that woman is to just make sure you have that plan written down. And even if it seems crazy, if it seems far fetched, like, I don't know how I'm going to get, I don't know how my, my dream and my goal of my show is for it to be syndicated. So I wrote that down. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that's going to happen and how to get into that. But, and it seems far fetched. It seems like, wow, can I do that? Yes. I'm going to write that down. And that's how, you know, we're going to make that happen. That's right. That's right. And as long as you believe in yourself, that's all that counts. You know, like I said, that's the rest right. of it is irrelevant. Like I said, you're not going to always get that support. And I think a lot of times people make the mistake that just because they're in business, they expect everybody to follow them. They expect everybody to be supportive. They expect them all to spend their money and just to them. And, you know, I said, right. it's such a, a much larger world out there. And there's always somebody out here who needs to hear those kind words, you know, who needs to have that awareness or who needs some to hear that one thing that can change them forever, you know? So, uh, I definitely believe in what you're doing and I definitely appreciate the kind words that you had given to me and said to me, cause it means a lot to me and, and you're right. You know, there is not enough support and that is the reason why I have built this program. Um, even with my women's small business initiative program is that that's what it's about is sharing resources and supporting each other and utilizing the, the, the platform to enhance yourself. And then there's another woman out here who's interested in, in becoming an entrepreneur. We're here for you. That's what this is what yes. it's about that. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. We, we've got this. Yep. <laughs> so. Right, right, right. Yep. No, I, I totally agree. And like I said, that's what I love about this. And I love about your show and, and what you're doing. So again, kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. But on that note, we definitely want to know how we can all get a hold of you and when we can listen to your show. So if you could give that information, that would be great. Okay. Well, again, it's Pink Conversations, Empower, Inform, Inspire. And you can look us up on Facebook. It's under Pink Conversations. And it's spelled just like it is. We didn't go pink crazy with it, you know, spelling it some crazy <laughs> way. It's spelled pink, P-I-N-K, and then Conversations on Facebook. Um, and you can also find us on Instagram um, at Pink Conversations underscore Tamika Bright. Um, and my name is spelled with an E, T-A-M-E-K-A. Um, and I also my website is Pink combo.com or tamika bright.com All and i'm right. on tuesday nights uh 6 p.m to 8 p.m and i'm also do, i'm on facebook live with it so you can see every crazy thing that goes on in the studio and there's some crazy moments that i have <laughs> <laughs> that you can see you can see me live in the studio doing everything and uh, if you're in the fairville north carolina area it's on um 105.7 so you can turn uh, to that station and listen, WCLN 105.7. All right. Great. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Do you have any last words for the listeners? Uh, just stay purpose-driven and passion-focused. And I just want to take this time to thank you once again. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. And again, I would like to thank you for coming on tonight and sharing your story, but for everyone else, I'm here every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. You can follow us on Spreaker. That's at www.spreaker.com slash user slash WSBI. You can also find me on the WSBI website anytime at www.wsbillc.com. Visit us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or and Instagram. But until then, you all enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night.